new reaction is pouring in after former President Donald Trump embraced a January the 6th defendant at a diner during a campaign stop in New Hampshire last week. Trump called the woman, quote, terrific. She was identified as Mickey Larson Olson, a QAnon supporter who says she considers Trump the real president. She served prison time for her actions during the Capitol attack, and she says she wants former Vice President Mike Pence executed for treason. Here's how the moment played out Thursday in Manchester. That's not a candidate being ambushed. He goes out of his way to look for her. NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard actually interviewed the same woman last September when she called for the execution of members of Congress who certified the 2020 election. Those were domestic terrorists inside our Capitol, and I'm going to prove it on my trial. Who are the I, domestic terrorists? Our Congress. Our Congress that's been stealing elections for a very long time. Our country's been under admiralty law since 1871. What should the punishment for those members of Congress be? Execution for being traitors. That's what our Constitution demands. Our de Constitution demands that traitors in our nation are executed. And that's what should happen to each each and every person that hijacked the voice of we the people. Is that something that you see actually happening? Yes. Does she believe it? Is it a show? What's with the outfit? A spokesperson for the Trump campaign did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Neither did a Pence spokesperson. Uh, Lemire, um, former Republican Congressman, by the way, Liz Cheney of Wyoming, did respond to her posting this mm -hmm. tweet quoting, Trump is embracing a January the 6th defendant who called for the execution of members of Congress to elected Republicans who have endorsed him. You are endorsing his conduct on January the 6th and every day since. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. We know that quote, Lemire. But... We do, and we so there, often... embracing Trump. Yeah, and so often it falls to the likes of Liz Cheney as one of the lone Republican voices mm -hmm. to speak out against something like this. And what did that get her? A 40-point primary loss last year in losing her congressional seat. And there had been some chatter in the aftermath when this video emerged. Oh, was this bad advance work? How could Trump's people have let her get near him? He sought her out. This was this, he was delighted to see her. That's a message he deliberately sent. Let's recall, of course, Charlie Sykes, that this is someone who has appeared with a choir of convicts, of January 6th convicts, and they sing, and he appears with them. Uh, so this is not something he's running from. He is embracing it, and it is part of a, a further effort to normalize January 6th in the Republican discourse uh, from Donald Trump and, frankly, most other Republicans. Even if they're not embracing it, they're certainly just keeping their mouths shut. Yeah, there's no question about it that she's a little bit on, on the fringe, but this is not a one-off, Jonathan, as you are pointing out. He went down to Waco, Texas, and stood with his hand on his heart while they played in the anthem from uh, January 6th, um, uh, you know, pro, well, uh, rioters. Um, look, this is something that Donald Trump has made no secret of, uh, that he wants to rewrite the history of January 6th, that he wants to associate with them. He regards them as great patriots. He said repeatedly, or implied repeatedly, uh, that he would in fact pardon them all if he got back into power. And you know what is extraordinary um, about Liz Cheney's comment, as you point out, is how rare and unusual it is that here we are allegedly in the midst of a presidential campaign. Right? There are other Republicans who are running. How many other Republicans said this is unacceptable? This sends the wrong message. We are talking about people who are calling for the execution of members of Congress, who in fact are, you know, called for the death penalty for Mike Pence. This 
should be low-hanging fruit. This should not be difficult. This is not a morally wrenching decision for Republicans to say, no, we, you know, we'll go with you this far, but we're not going to go this far as you have gone. But uh, again, to underline the fact this is not a one-off, Donald Trump has been aggressively embracing the people who attacked, invaded the Capitol. And I think that people need to understand that that is not simply an historical fact, that he's also signaling that, uh, that he supported the coup last time, and that he might support future actions, again, particularly as someone who has called for mass protests if and when he is indicted. So this is, this is a very incendiary situation. Well, and, and, and you have mainstream Republicans uh, who are considered mainstream in 2023, Charlie. They're rushing to endorse Donald Trump. They're rushing to Mar-a-Lago, despite the Amazing. fact that this guy is a presidential candidate, uh, has a convict choir of rioters actually uh, singing, uh, and, and, and yes. he's saluting them. Uh, the fact that he, he continues to pander uh, to these rioters. Uh, they're called political prisoners by Donald Trump and his Republican Party. And, and you even go back to before and during January the 6th, it's Donald Trump that told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. It's Donald Trump that after his lawyer said, no, you have no case here, he ran and tweeted, uh, I think in the middle of the night, come to Washington January the 6th, it's wild. going to be wild, right? He said that. And then on January the 6th, and we found this out by questioning of people who work for Donald Trump, everybody in the White House wanted him to call down and stop the riots. His children, uh, his lawyers, his workers. I remember Pat Cipollone was asked who in the White House yeah. did not want him to call. And Cipollone said, nobody. Everybody wanted him to call yeah. to stop the riots. What was Donald Trump doing for two, three hours? Staring at the violence and actually rewinding to the most violent parts of police officers. And again, these are Republicans that are rushing to endorse this guy at Mar-a-Lago. Trump watching and taking delight with police officers getting their brains bashed in by American flags. And these this Republicans happened. rush to endorse him now, Charlie? I mean, the, yeah. you talk about a sickness. People keep saying, oh, it's not fascism. It's, that, it's this, it's that. I, don't, I just, I don't know. I don't, how, how, how tightly do we define fascism in 2023 when you have actually an attempt to overthrow a government yeah. through violence and the continued glorification of that violence and the continued glorification of those people who tried to overthrow the federal government so much though, so that he's turned these rioters, he's turned these insurrectionists heroes. into political heroes who now have a convict choir that he salutes.